and livable environments that we all share. The borough president has long been an opponent of these mega towers, these super scrapers. The project that's before this community and that this community faces is particularly egregious in our opinion. The thousand plus foot tower proposed is grotesque and a grotesque example of an outdated decades old zoning text in this narrow residential neighborhood. Right. We support our community driven planning proposal and the objectives you develop for community driven neighborhood rezoning and plan which promotes smart development, affordable housing and preserves the neighborhood character. It's pushing back on this idea that these developments are islands unto themselves. We will stand with you and, your, and with our fellow elected colleagues, like Council Member Ben Kalos, who's been a great champion on this issue, yes. to make sure that the rezoning plan that, you have, that you've proposed moves forward successfully. We will not allow the city to stand by and do nothing and allow the negative disruptions to this neighborhood, to the character of Sutton Place, and to the people here inside. We yes. must defend the community. Thank you. Thank you so much. And now from the office of Dan Gorodnik, we have Mariana Vaidman Stone. Bravo. Bravo! Thank you. Thank you. Um, good morning. My name is Mariana Vaidman Stone. I'm from Council Member Gorodnik's office. He was very sorry that he could not be here with you himself today, but he asked me to convey his full throated support for the thoughtful plan that this community has developed. We're very proud of this community for putting in the time, the effort, and the resources to create a, a thoughtful, reasoned plan for the future of this area. The plan would safeguard the area from uncontrolled development and super tall towers uh, while still permitting reasonable growth in the community. It would establish a bulwark against the economic pressures that so often disfigure long-established long neighborhoods. It would keep this area beautiful and livable. We call on the Department of City Planning to take this plan seriously, to treat it fairly, and to get it through the review process as quickly as possible. Yeah. Specifically, I should say that just yesterday, Councilmember Gorodnik called uh, the chair of the City Planning Commission, Carl Weisbrod, to urge him to move more quickly on yes. this application. <laughs> Working together, all of us, the activists, the supporters, the elected officials, and hopefully the city, can make sure that the Sutton Place neighborhood retains its charm and its human scale for many, many years to come. Thank you all. Here, Lynn, can you step up? Sure. Yay, Lynn! Hey, Tell Lynn! Where you're from. Yes, thank you. Um, I'm Lynn Ellsworth. I am chair of the Tribeca Trust and co-founder of New Yorkers for a Human Scale City. We're an alliance of now 94 civic and community groups across all five boroughs. We have a unifying petition, which East River 50s Alliance has signed on to. Uh, you're listed there as among our co-sponsors. It's at www.humanscale.nyc. Um, the New Yorkers for a Human Scale City seeks a, seeks a human scale build-out for New York, um, one that is controlled by communities as opposed to big real estate interests. Um, I want to say that your cause, I feel, is our cause. The super talls are an insult to the urbanity that has made New York so great. They create kind of a city of dead zones that we need to stop. But across all five boroughs, we find that it's not just a problem of super talls. It's every neighborhood has their version of super talls. So we need some kind of height restriction in our city. Um, probably one of the ideas we've been talking about is that if you take the average height of the historic fabric across a block, say that new infill construction has to be the average height of the historic fabric that's already there. Now that's kind of a radical proposal, but for many neighborhoods that would be a height increase. Um, and I think it's a way to compromise with big real estate about how to build out our city. Um, we also need to think about how to regulate air rights in New York. 
think a lot of the super tolls are coming up because of unregulated air rights transfers. And if we can get a handle on how to regulate them, we might be able to stop them citywide. And we also need a planning process that puts neighborhoods in charge. A planning process like you underwent. You have a good model here of hiring your own experts and working with your electeds to create your own plan. But there's kind of an interesting reason about why you had to hire outside experts. Um, you know, I think if uh, we get a situation in New York where our Department of City Planning becomes captured by big real estate interests, in my field we call it regulatory capture, there's a problem. How can they represent the public good? So to do that, you have to find outside people to do that. That still means it's a good plan and it's a good process. But I think to scale it up citywide, we'll need a fund where other neighborhoods can access it to hire their own experts and undergo the same kind of planning process. I think it could work everywhere, including my neighborhood in Tribeca. Um, now, short of that, short of such a fund, if we had regulatory or charter reform to make city planning represent community interests, now, then we wouldn't need such a fund. That's all I have to say, so thank you. Thank you. Councilman Van Kalos, who, whose unbelievable spirit, devotion, and passion for our cause has led us to our first round win. We thank you from the bottom of our hearts and hope you will lead us forward. So I think many of you already know the chant. Stop super scrapers. Stop super scrapers. Stop super scrapers. Stop. Super scraper stop super scraper stop super scraper stop super scraper stop and stop it Thank you all for coming out this morning and taking a stand against the super scrapers I want to uh, tell a little story about a community and elected officials who got tired of the same story the same story of developers doing whatever they want, whenever they want, of elected officials doing nothing about it, of communities not doing anything. And I want to tell a story about a community that said they were going to do something different. I want to talk about the Sutton area community and Dieter Selig, who organized and got over 2,000 signatures in the span of just 10 days. Community Board 6, which acted very quickly, calling on the Department of City Planning for a zoning change in this neighborhood to keep it a residential neighborhood with buildings that people who like Herndon Worth who helped make this neighborhood great and I see Herndon here today we're so lucky to have the Sage of Sutton here and we can't displace people like Herndon Worth in favor of buildings for billionaires who won't even live there and so we asked the Department of City Planning at the Community Board to do their job to bring a rezoning. But somehow we had a feeling they weren't gonna do that. So we got together with our neighbors like Alan Kirsch and Lisa Mercurio, who got together with all the other buildings in the neighborhood and we went building by building, building an association, a group, the East River 50s Alliance to fight for change, fight for this rezoning. And we spent a lot of time working together, asking anyone to do their part individual by individuals chipping in for a community-led effort like we haven't really seen anywhere else in a city that is looking to protect the Sutton area from super scrapers, from overdevelopment, from towers 900 feet and above. Yeah. And so as we were bringing it, we did something else that was slightly different. This is one of the few community-led development uh, rezonings where elected officials have all signed on. And so just to talk a little bit about the success, the community board has already asked for this. They have to vote on this. The borough president gets the next vote, but she's also an applicant, and we're lucky to have Aldrin Bonilla, her deputy borough president, because she is that strong on this. And some interesting piece is she can actually force the city planning commission to take a vote. So if they won't do it on their own, we will look to our borough president 
to make it so because this is one of the few times where our borough president is on and fighting with us. And so beyond that, it comes to the city council, but both council members from the neighborhood, myself and council member Dan Garotnik, are already on board. And we also have the support of our state senator, Liz Krueger. So you've got all the elected officials behind you. But one of the things that's a concern is we filed for our pre-application in January and it's already May. And we need this to happen sooner than later. Uh, things may be stalled with this specific project, but if you look, that's not the only one we're fighting. There's so many more coming down the pike and we need the rezoning now. What's the, yes. what's it up? What's the, what is the reason? And so today we're here and we're all here calling on the Department of City Planning to Lisa, move forward with this rezoning application so that we can stop all of this from happening. And so we need to continue the fight. We need to get everyone we know to sign up for the East River 50s Alliance. We need to make sure that every single building is a member of the East River 50s Alliance. And we need to call on the Department of City Planning to do their job We've done our part, now it's time for them to do theirs. And I just want to thank the East River 50s Alliance for keeping this fight going, keeping the fight alive. And this isn't over till this neighborhood has been rezoned. And we will stop super scrapers. Stop super scrapers. Stop super scrapers. Stop super scrapers. Thank you. Okay, that actually concludes our rally this morning. We would love everyone to write a letter. Continue to send your letters to the mayor, to the Department of City Planning, to your elected officials. Make sure that your voice is heard. This is where we live, and there's no other place like it in the city. Um, I've been here for 20 years. I'm sure many of you have been here for even more than that. Let's make it um, so that it's a place we all recognize, know, and can continue to love. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.